Our interest began in 1994, or perhaps even earlier. There was an extraordinary collection of people uh, in the philosophy and literature departments at that time at Warwick. We're also now profoundly obsolete in the technological terrain that we've created. But we're all loosely associated uh, around what we saw as the most exciting uh, department in the whole university, the philosophy department, where Nick Lend was a particularly compelling figure. I think one of the, one of the things that we thought would happen, or, or that we were interested in, was the relation between obsolescence of culture, of cultural norms that the internet and technology would usher in. We thought it was a period of massive change. And the fact that we've generated now, uh, or technology generates a speediness that accelerates the body to attain planetary escape velocity. All of a sudden the body finds itself in an, in an immense extraterrestrial space. The body cannot cope um, its softness, its wetness, its complexity um, is not really suited to environments off this biosphere. We simply thought that, I mean, things that people said when they came along to Virtual Futures, because it, and a lot of people from outside academia came. People who just happened to live in the area turned up. And they were very skeptical, first of all, about the existence of cyberspace even in the first place. Um, skeptical about the internet, skeptical about um, even this idea of everyone using keyboards, computers. They yeah. thought, you mean, how is this going to happen? And it was left to us, first of all, we were very young at the time, to point out that there's a built-in life cycle here, and it's a human life cycle, and um, uh, all the people who were complaining would be dead within 30 years or 40 years. Uh, and already now, I'm not even using a keyboard anymore. Um, I'm not typing, I'm not texting when I use my mobile phone, but I'm using something called Swipe. Texting already has had an incredibly short life, and it seems to be dead. And we were fascinated by this kind of rapid change and how... In our perceptions, we thought that the rate of change itself was accelerating. Certainly, uh, if you apply Moore's law and translate it on a, let's say, a cultural basis, if you interpret it, whether you say metaphorically or not, if you interpret it as a law that has more than application merely to the speed of processes, but perhaps to the speed of change itself, then we thought, yeah, something is reaching a tipping point here. I think, uh, for me personally, um, though this was certainly not the case for all of the people involved, um, one of the principal motivators uh, for this fascination in the relation between technology and uh, what we were studying, philosophy, was born out of um, the cultural atmosphere of the time. Uh, this was uh, the height of techno, of of open air rave parties, of 25,000 people kind of motoring down to the M25 and gathering in a field and partying there all weekend. Um, and to to this, you know, relentless machine music. And so that was part of the spirit in which we organised it. As I say, part of a almost a punk spirit but a punk spirit married with modern technology and I think that this was you know one of the events where I mean it got covered so widely across the nation and I mean across the globe there were you know TV crews came from Korea to film the whole thing you know and it plastered it all over the daily newspaper the Jongang Daily News clearly something was going on that people, whatever Warwick University thought of it, people elsewhere took a lot of notice. It was important, you know, elsewhere. And so, as an aspect of that history, I think that, you know, it deserves historical analysis on its own. There was an element of theatre always to the way we did Virtual Futures, an element of entertainment which was the hook, 
Sure, there was the hardcore cognition stuff. There were people like George Campus we brought from Hungary. It was, uh, I, I, I think, maybe three people in the world could understand, never mind three people in Warwick. Um, but at the same time, we had these, these, not to deprecate what they do, but they were artists with tremendous popular appeal. They, uh, and uh, much of the publicity we did beforehand was playing that up, provoking people letting people know that what was going to happen was not just a dry academic conference but some kind of chaotic freak show. But developed by pedal locomotion, two limbs become manipulators. With manipulators we make tools, instruments, artefacts. So one can very well argue that the beginning of, um, of, of defining what it means to be human has always been coupled to the technologies that we've made. So technology isn't an alien other, it has always been coupled to the body and it always functions with the body, constantly redefining it and uh, possibly now redesigning it.